We're going to look at refitting your engine now. There are three things to remember. All very simple, safety, safety, safety. Obviously you accomplish taking the engine out okay in the first place, but there are a few extra things we need to contend with this time, and that is actually raising the engine onto your trolley jack, and then actually whilst you're pumping it up, guiding it into place. Now I strongly suggest having at least one friend, maybe a couple around to help you. Uh, back in the day, I probably did about 10 or 15 engine in and outs before I worked out a technique of doing it on my own. But you need to be careful about your back while you're doing the engine lifting. And you also need to be careful in case anything unbalances along the way. You don't want an engine dropping on you. Other points to remember are actually physically moving the engine into position. And most importantly, when you go to uh, get your trolley jack in position underneath the engine, to make sure it's on good, hard, smooth surface. So you can always use a, a piece of stout board for that. You can almost get away when you're taking the engine out of not worrying, but it's crucial that we can position that engine and move it back gently and precisely. Other than that, we'll look at the tools and get on with the job. Tools wise, very simple, all from the basic tool kit. Hammer, pliers, mole grits, because they're always useful. Ratchet, extension, 17mm socket for the top engine bolt. 17mm spanner for the other engine nuts. 10mm spanner for the tinware, possibly. 8mm spanner, definitely for your carburetor cable and probably your heater cables if you've got them attached. And finally, a crosshead and a flat bladed screwdriver just for any uh, of the tinware and the air filter clamp. When moving the engine around, you've got a few options. If you've got a dead smooth floor, two people, you could lift it up and put it onto the trolley jack, or otherwise you can just manhandle it around. But my advice is to avoid actually lifting it, even with somebody else if you can. It just saves your back and muscles. So we'll need to start moving it towards the vehicle. And you can do it literally by just shifting the weight from one side to the other, or what I like to call the bum shuffle, where you're using the exhaust and you're not actually going to be straining any of your back muscles at all. So you just literally slide it a little bit at a time, left and right, until you're over near the car. So once you've got the engine in the vicinity of the vehicle, it's time to jack the vehicle back up again, unless you can slide under in one swoop. Now one thing to bear in mind is not to have the vehicle jacked up too high, because otherwise you're working at height with the engine on the trolley jack and you won't actually be able to get the engine positioned in. So don't go too high with the vehicle. Right, let's slide it under. And please make sure when you've got the vehicle jacked up that you've got your axle stands repositioned just in case you catch the engine against the bodywork. And bear in mind when you come back down off of the jack, it will swing over in an arc. So make sure you push the engine over in line with the center of the axle stands in the original position. Okay, coming down. And as if by magic, they end up in exactly the place I said they were. Isn't that incredible, eh? And so the engine's underneath the vehicle now, we can see it here, and what we're aiming to do is get the crankcase half, so that's the line that goes approximately underneath the carburetor, in line with the input shaft once it's on the trolley jack. So we're looking at approximates here. At the moment it's too far over to the right, so we need to push it a little bit to the left of the engine bay. And again, just quite simply, now a couple of really important things to remember here. Uh, the safety we've already mentioned, uh, getting a friend ready, but there's one little technical thing. We need to remember this, the accelerator cable mantra. Accelerator cable, accelerator cable, accelerator cable. Put it to one side for the moment, but do not forget it. If you have to put that cable in afterwards, it's just a complete pain. So we've got that ready. Now we're ready to tilt the engine up and put it onto the trolley jack. Now there are lots of ways of doing this. This is the way that I like to do it, but just be careful, be sensible, and have people available to help. Okay, it's handy when there's a standard exhaust on. Lots of people laugh about the pea shooters and it being like a wheelbarrow, but you can lift it up. You do need to come back a little bit so that you've got enough angle there. The fan housing, just enough room. Put it up against the bell housing, it again helps secure it. Put the trolley jack under as far as we can and we're looking to get it balanced right bang on the sump plate as we did before. Again, I'm doing this single-handedly, but please have a friend. Wedge the trolley jack with your feet and then pull down on the tailpipes to lift it over. 
And then once it's up, you can slide it under a little. And this is why it's so important to have a smooth runway underneath. So if you've had to use a bit of board, fair enough. And then finally, just give it a little wiggle on the trolley jack. Again, you don't need massive strength, just balance it and give it a pull. Now, if you found that the cup is not exactly on the sump plate, uh, use a couple of bricks or preferably a bit of wood because it's less likely to slip around. And then you can just lift it up a little and push the jack under a bit more and do that until you're absolutely sure of the balance. So once you're happy that the engine is now set on top of the trolley jack, we can now go to line it up one final time so it's in line with the input shaft. So you're looking at the crankcase halves, the gap that you can see, or at least not the gap, the, the, the mark down the crankcase, or the centre of the lower pulley if you like. And now holding the engine onto the trolley jack, we can use the trolley jack's manoeuvrability to get this in exactly the right position. Again, if you're trying to do this on rough ground or soft ground, this would be impossible to do. So once you've got it lined up, approximately, accelerator cable, accelerator cable. What we want to do to start off with is just engage the very end of it into the guide tube conduit, which is down here. So we just want to poke it in for now. Once we're halfway up, when the fan housing's about here, we can push some more of that cable through. So now it's a case of making sure the engine is steady, is firm, it can't wobble, and gently jacking up. A few things to watch out for just before we start doing the final jack up, and that is I always like to remove or at least push back these two top bolts so that they're not going to catch when we're engaging the engine into the bell housing. Uh, the other thing, remember, we're going to have to push a little bit more of the accelerator cable through once we're up a bit higher. And the final thing to watch out for is just that nothing catches, the tinware on the engine catches against the engine bay rubber seal, and particularly that top pulley, the nut that holds the top pulley onto the alternator, catching here and lifting up because uh, that will catch you out. Otherwise, we're ready to jack up some more. So, keeping a firm grasp, start jacking up, and bear in mind, the higher up the jack you go, the more the engine will come towards you. From, so from time to time, making sure everything's nice and firm, you just need to push the whole thing in a tiny bit. And then we can come up some more. And it's about this height that you want to push a little bit more of that accelerator cable through, just so that nothing gets looped up or crushed. And we can see at this point that the engine bay seal had just caught the top lip. Okay, a quick reposition there. And what I'm actually doing now is slightly pushing the top of the engine towards the front of the car to lean that top pulley away from the seal. And again, we can just physically peel it off. And that looks like it's going to be clear now and we can carry on jacking up but keeping an eye on that all the time because we don't want to rip that seal and just moving forwards there again because when we do the final bit we want the engine actually tipped ever so slightly backwards so we can engage the lower studs. So this is looking down now at the relationship between the engine, the flywheel here and the bell housing of the gearbox. We're pretty much bang in line here and also that that cable we've poked a little bit more of it through just to save us any bother later. And then we can continue carefully jacking up. And again, come forwards a tiny bit. Now we're getting to the point where we need to keep an eye on the engine tinware along the sides, clearing that rubber all around. Okay, we're just about ready for our first look underneath now to look at engaging the two lower studs of the engine into the bell housing. Okay, well we can see our studs here almost lined up now with the lower holes on both sides and I like just to have a slight incline so the back of the engine just ever so slightly down and these up and that will assist and then it's just a case of a gentle wiggle and a manoeuvre and trying to get them forwards. I can hear something up top. Okay I've come around the other side because the heat exchanger the top of the lever was just fouling on the bodywork a little bit so I'm just going to give that a wiggle and then we can slide the engine forwards. There we go. When we're in the first portion, you can see the teeth from the bottom of the flywheel have gone in. And now I can pump the jack up a little bit more and I want to bring that engine more horizontal. Okay, now I've taken the jack up a tiny bit more, a few more centimetres. It's more parallel, the gap down here. And what I'm going to do is go upstairs, put my hand on top of the fan housing, using the other hand on the exhaust to guide it, and maybe my knee against the, the trolley jack here. And we're going to push the whole thing forwards. It might possibly need a bit more jacking up, but we're almost there. So 
just a quick visual check and maybe a little poke around, make sure that nothing's catching down here with the seal against either the exhaust or the engine tinware. And then one hand on the top, and one hand on the exhaust to guide, and we're just gonna wiggle it forwards and then give it another jack up. Again, making sure that all the rubbers are clear and free. We have got one that's a little stuck over there, but I think it's far enough in, we can sort that out at the end. And again, another little wiggle and a push. And then back underneath to check how we're doing. Now at this point, the lower studs are engaged into the bell housing, so the engine should be a lot more stable. You won't need to have somebody else helping you. And I'm just rotating the top pulley here so that's turning the flywheel to make sure that the flywheel's not jammed against the bell housing at all. Now you'll only be able to do this if it's in neutral and the handbrake is off. And that's all good, so again, we can just go for another push forwards. And doing that sometimes can actually help draw the engine in onto the bell housing as well. Well, it feels like we're very nearly there now, so we'll go and have another check underneath. Well, on the right-hand side of the engine bay, the inner seal was stuck, so I flicked that off, and I think now we should just be able to slide it on home. There we go. Beautiful. And we're almost ready for a tea break, but we're going to get the two nuts on there just to secure them off so everything's safe. It's not going to fall out, but we'll put them in there anyway. Now, sometimes that final little bit of pushing in, despite moving around on that top pulley with a fan belt, you can't get it to engage. So there is another trick. You will need a friend for this one. You put the car into third gear, get a friend to hold the other wheel, make sure the hand brakes off, and you physically turn this wheel, and it will turn the input shaft, and quite often that can just straighten the engine up enough to draw it into the gearbox. So, is your friend ready? Are you ready? Yeah, get on with it. <laughs> 